It's all right, guys. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We're fine. Everything's okay. A few weeks ago, the ApeScape 20th anniversary uh, Twitter account, as you can see, made this tweet. And I don't know what it is. Everyone started losing hope. Everyone's like, oh, no, it's over. The gate, you know, there's no ApeScape coming. It's done. We're done. There's nothing to do. And I don't know why you guys are jumping the gun like that. Relax, okay? We're fine. We're fine. But just reading the bio of the account, it says this is the official account for celebrating the 20th anniversary of the birth of the Monkey Catch game. All this account was made for was to celebrate the anniversary of people sorrow people sorrow i think that's how you say it, or ape skin and there's a few things to note about that fact right firstly we can see that it was born on june 24th so we can say june 24 25th that is the same time that the first ape skin game released in japan that being june uh, 25th of 1999 right and then that tweet was put out on june 22nd uh, 2020. So just a few days before it actually released back in 1999. So essentially the Twitter account was meant to be run for a year to, to, you know, to celebrate that 20th anniversary. And another thing to, to note is the idea that this was all Japanese, right? This was kind of only for the Japanese audience. You know, you know how it is though, us, us Americans, we always find our way to them. And, you know, with translation and all that kind of stuff, we're able to kind of share the celebration with them. But let's be real. If there was a new game going to be coming out, they would have to market this in a globalized structure. Uh, setting right they wouldn't just keep it to Japan Japan right so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them to make a Japanese kind of anniversary celebration and then announce a new game when this is a global kind of thing it should be at least this was kind of just meant to market and keep the name the the franchise the brand alive right this 20th anniversary gave us a rebranding of it we looked at that in my very what is that maybe a year ago video you know they had this new website with the new designs kind of being shown here very cool i like the simplicity the the lack of like lot what is it trait line the, the the i don't know it's it's an art style that that you know is known in the art world that i'm not really sure what it's called but i really like how they look how they look and the, this is kind of Piggy piggybacking into the next point the idea that this is not free right they had to pay money designers to design all of this they had to pay money to get somebody to run this whole account for a year's time and what's interesting is the way that they were kind of dynamic in this account and so the way i see this they've had they had like a budget like all right we're gonna run this account for a year you know social media person you have this amount of money just produce content for the, the the account keep the name alive we see the last time was two released they have this little collab they even have covid stuff if i can find their pictures where they're basically promoting the idea of staying at home i thought this was interesting it said people sorry did you know that bananas are highly effective in boosting immunity you know what i mean like it was dynamic with the way the world was changing this was april 23rd so they just had this set time period where they're just going to promote the brand you know keep it alive make people know that it's not Dead. And the main and last thing that I want to point out is the idea of the state of Japan Studio, right? Let's really think about what they did this generation, and there's not a whole lot to, to talk about apart from the Vita aspect of them, right? Whenever the Vita came out, it was kind of mixed with the PS4 generation at the start. It was in the middle of PS3 and PS4, and they produced, what, Freedom Wars, Gravity Rush 1 and 2 Remastered. Soul Sacrifice was also collab to name a few. I mean, for Free Wars of the Club as well. So it's like they were doing a lot more for the Vita. And then whenever the PS4 kind of kicked into gear, they were a bit unorganized. It's just to put it like that. The whole concept of making games is no easy task. And it's only getting more complicated and time consuming, right? So when they went from a Vita kind of shop, structured in that sense, it needed to transition into a more... Uh, you know, console-based approach. Some people don't even like to develop on console. Some people are strictly, you know, Vita or handheld developers and things like that. They want to stick to that, to that, uh, to that space. And so I think the only game that they made themselves was Knack, and we kind of know how that went. <laughs> Gravity Rush One and Two, pretty big projects. Gravity Rush Two had some development, you know, struggles. Um, Gravity Rush 1 did really well and that was like, that was after they were really working on it for some set time. I want to point out Freedom Wars was a five year development process. Now that one had a lot of problems. Three, three studios working on one game. Now I think Valhalla 
of it. That's Assassin's Creed. They say there's like 12. Now that's just OD, but that's a way bigger deal than, than you know, that's a way bigger situation than when we're talking about Freedom Wars. It's a handheld game. Three studios. That's not easy. And also, if you think about these games like Apexcape, the last one is on PS3 and it's a move game. So there's really no assets for them to reuse if we just kind of make some assumptions. So a lot of what they need to make for a new Apexcape game will be from the ground up, right? And again, it couldn't have started until they were ready and prepared after restructuring the whole uh, studio itself. So there's a lot to be to be done. This account stopping, you know, not tweeting anymore does not mean that we're not getting a game. I am very confident in there being a game for the PS5. Speaking to my to what Herman Holster said, what Jim Ryan has said, like this is all tying together. So if you did not watch my PS5 would be different video, I encourage you to watch that because that speaks to kind of this whole variety aspect that we're going to be seeing from PlayStation moving forward into this next generation. So no, the hope is not lost. We are still going to see a APC game. I promise you, it's just going to take some time. You know, it's going to take some time and uh, we got to be patient. We got to be patient. And whenever we kind of forget about it in a sense, it's going to come faster than we think, than we're expecting, right? The, the problem with this was we keep seeing them tweet like every day and you're just like, all right, when are they going to announce? When are they going to announce? And then whenever they stop it, I understand where your head could be. Be like, oh my God, it's over. You know what I mean? So that's what I got to say. Thank you for celebrating the 20th anniversary. There are things I could not couldn't do in the last year, but I have some regrets. I'll escape until the day when I'll get some day. I don't even, bad translation, but you get the idea. What does this one say? And this one says, people sorrow, see you later. Now this is a cool scene. Who dressed up in that? Who dressed up in that? Who's in that? Who's outside the office dressed up as that? You know what I'm trying to say? The franchise isn't dead. The franchise is coming back. Stay tuned. That's all I got to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you want to stay in tune with the whole Apescape movement. PS5, I'm in next generation mode. You don't want to miss what I got in store this coming year i was gonna say this year but there's not much coming this year so hope you guys enjoyed i will see you all in the next video peace